it's your first time watching, thanks just for hitting the video and taking a look at it. So today we're going to be tying a mallard and claret. It's a quite an old traditional wet fly. Now, the hook I have in the vise is a Camazan B100 or B175, sorry, size 10, which is a heavy wet fly. And I'm going to be using Unithread in 80 red. So catch on just behind the eye and bring your thread down. Touch and turns just down to between the point and the barb. There we go, and break off. Now for our tail. We're going to be using some dyed hot orange golden pheasant tippet. Again, the original had the standard orange, just the, the original colour, but most of my fishing, or this pattern anyway, is for sea trout or dolichon. They're a river run loch trout from Loch Ney. And I just, well, I'd be a lot more confident just with brighter patterns. So just pinch off about a dozen or so fibres. Length of the tail we're going probably about the length of your hook shank. Tie them in. Happy enough for that. And then tidy everything up. There we go. This is a pattern kind of doesn't really get used too much now. I suppose it's a lot of the modern patterns maybe have taken over from it, but I suppose, it, again, even this isn't a, a true original, it's just a bit of a variant that I would use myself. For the rib now, we have some gold oval and small. And I, there's, I suppose with the, the range of materials available now, everybody likes to try and put their own twist on some of the original patterns. I'm sure if you were to just use them as they were, they wouldn't really... They'd still catch a few fish. I'm sure they could definitely hold their own. But... I suppose sometimes it's catching the angler, not the fish. Now, I'm just going to add in a couple of turns of this Unimylar in gold as a bit of a butt. Again, slight deviation from the actual, actual original. But... I just think it looks looks nice. Just brings a bit of a, a bit of bling to the fly. So catch in and counterwind or tinsel. So basically, what's that? Two or three turns, and we'll catch it off. Trim off our waist and just bind the rest of it down. There we go. Now, for the main body material, I'm going to be using just some of Band Valley's Supernatural Dubbin. I've kind of I've kind of moved over to using that now because, well, sales for is getting it's getting very hard to get, hard to source. And to be honest, I've tried a few different materials and I would find this probably probably easier to use than some of the some of the seals for even the seals for substitutes. I'm not a big fan of synthetic materials for these types of flies. And I know this is this is a natural material. It dubs on really well. So we just put on a wee noodle of thread or noodle of dubbing and create create our body. You want it tapering up slightly. But not too much. We've got our wing to sit over there, and if it's if it's too thick, it can it can definitely impact your wing. Now we'll take our rib and just one turn over the top of our tail, just locks it all down in tight, and then open turns coming up our body. And there we go. And catch off. Get my old scissors. I don't like trimming the oval with my good scissors. I find it can blunt it. So now we're just going to tie 
tidy up a lot of that stuff there. Let's get it all pulled back. And again, that just secures our rib down and tight. Now just while I'm here, I'm going to take my Velcro just before I have my haggle on. Give it a good rough up. That's, that's not too bad there. See, just a wee fibre sticking out over the eye there. I'll try and trim it off because I don't think it'll, I don't think it's long enough to get it tied back later. Now we're going to add in our haggle, which I should have had this out of the packet, but it didn't. We have a, it's a genetic hen dyed claret. And we'll just get a, a feather picked off, something that will sweep past the point. Yep, that one should do. Again, just expose our stem. Open up our tip and trim it. And then catch in. So for turns of haggle, really it comes down to, to yourself. If you're fishing a loch and it's flat calm, you want it quite sparse, or if there's a big wave, aye, nice, nice and bushy. But these are these genetic haggles are quite good. They're fairly dense fibre wise, so you don't really you don't really need too many turns of haggle, which is good because you don't then, in turn, you don't need to leave too much room at the eye. So there's just a few turns. Catch it on. You don't really need too many because we're going to fold or try and tease whatever's at the top down as well. So finger and thumb pushing everything down. We'll catch that wee boy there too that's sticking out or even just finger on the top just to just to tease everything down and kind of try and coerce it into place as you can see there fibers are going past the point and then a few turns of thread over it just to lock everything in place it's not too bad now I'm just going to build up a bit of a head here to start with, reason being, I find it helps the wing set lower. If if there's too big of a jump between where your haggle and your eye, your wing will set quite high, and I prefer them to sit sort of low over the top of the the body. Now, I have a nice, well marked bronze mallard feather here. I'm just gonna take away a bit of the the rough at the end. Just try and get those fibres all married up again. So peel it off, aiming for a nice clean straight edge down the tips. Catch it in your finger and thumb and tear. Now this is something I struggled with for a long long time, the rolled wings. So basically your wing is three sections. Just fold it over. Take that wee bit out if it's if it's not going to lie right. Now again, there should be, I'll hold it, I don't know whether I'll pick up or not, it's reasonably flat but you can see there's a natural sort of, there we go, curve in the wing that way. So this is going to be your top. Like I said earlier I used to have a lot of problems with this and I was never really happy with my wing so this is the first one I've done on camera, hopefully it goes well. Length for the wing, really it's up to yourself, you can tie them short, even go as far as the length of the tail, but I think for this one we're going to go somewhere in between. So just set it on top of, or just about on top of your thread, catch it in with your finger and thumb, and then we're going to go into a winging loop. So over the top and pulling tight, pulling up, so one, two, three. Three is usually enough, but we'll not take any chances and we'll add another one in. There we go. And then, how does that look? That's not too bad. It sits. That's sitting low enough for me. Yeah, happy enough with that. 
Now just before I trim that off I'll get a few more wraps of thread over the top of that to secure it. And then we take our scissors in and as tight as we can get it, trim off our waist. So now just use our thread to tidy up. Just covering any wee bits of the bronze mallard that are sticking through, create our head. And we'll whip finish off. There's, don't know whether that's going to be visible in the video or not, but there's just some of the bronze mallard that's sticking off to the side, so I'll just trim it off with the scissors. Nice and tight. Again, flies don't have to be perfect, it's fishing flies. Not, they're not going into a, a frame where nobody's going to be giving you marks out of 10. And whip finish. There we have. I suppose it's not really an original Mallard and Claret, but it's a nice little variant. Just get some varnish on that. So, once again, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. And keep watching my videos so hopefully just have a wee go at that and pick up a few trout on it all the best and see you next time